students in this video we are going to see what is concurrent force and what is the acceleration and tension produced in a string when they are connected with two objects on the either side so first let us see what is concurrent force okay concurrent force now if there are n number of force say two or three amount uh, number of forces acting at the same point on the body then the force is said to be concurrent which means an n number of force acting on the same point of a body is what we call concurrent force example if this is a point on the body and three forces a f1 f2 and f3 are acting on it at the same point then the force is said to be what it is said to be concurrent now imagine there are n number of forces acting on the body and i want the body to remain in a state of rest or state of equilibrium means whatever was its initial state i want the body to be like it's that itself even after the forces are applied then what must what is the condition the n number of forces acting on it the sum must be equal to zero so the forces acting at the same point on the body are said to be concurrent force and when the number of forces act on a body at the same point this is very important only if it is acting on the same point it is said to be concurrent force and the net unbalanced force is zero the body will continue in its state of rest or of uniform motion along a straight line which means no change in direction and is said to be in the state of equilibrium or a condition in which it continue to remain in the same state so if f1 f2 and f3 are the forces acting at the same point are the concurrent force then what is the condition for the system to be in equilibrium it is f1 plus f2 plus f3 is equal to zero now if you look into the diagram you can see f2 and f1 they are they can be considered as two sides of a parallelogram isn't it consider the parallelogram then what will be the resultant according to parallelogram law the resultant will be the diagonal of the parallelogram which is equal to f is equal to f1 plus f2 now if you look into this diagram you can see f3 is acting downwards whereas f is equal to f1 plus f2 is acting vertically in the opposite direction isn't it so we can write f3 is equal to minus of f1 plus f2 now you will be thinking what is this you need this for doing your practicals okay or we can write f3 plus is equal to minus f minus f is equal to zero so n number of force acting on the same point of body is what we call is known as concurrent force and it is said to be the system is said to be in equilibrium if the sum of the forces unbalanced force is equal to zero okay now let us do one problem okay now look into this question a mass of 6 kg is suspended by a rope of length 2 meter from a ceiling a force of 5 newton in the horizontal direction is applied to the midpoint of the rope as shown in the figure so imagine there is a rope tied to the ceiling having 2 cm 2 meter length and at the end of the rope you are tying one weight say of 60 newton so the weight will be acting downwards isn't it now when you apply when you are tying the rope to the weight at the end what happens the weight will try to pull the rope downwards in the same sense the uh, rope will be having a reaction force which is act trying to pull it upwards that is what we call the tension denoted by the letter t tension means the reaction force produced in the rope if you using a string if you are trying to pull one end of the string definitely what will the string do it will try to pull back isn't it that is a reaction created inside the string and is also known by the name tension denoted by the letter t now what did what did we do at the center of the force a force of 50 newton is applied along the horizontal direction so if this is the center of the rope 
Okay, someone applied a force of 50 Newton and pulled it in the horizontal direction. This horizontal direction this is the vertical direction. So now what will happen to the shape of the rope? The rope will become like this, isn't it? Weight of 60 Newton acting downward and 50 Newton acting in the horizontal direction. Now what is the question? You are asked to find out what is the angle of the rope makes with the vertical in equilibrium. With the vertical, you are asked to find out the angle theta. So you are asked to find out what is angle theta. Now, here also, even we are applying a force in the middle and we are trying to pull it in the horizontal direction, definitely a tension is created from that point to the upper portion of the rope and I am going to call that tension as, I have taken this as T1 and this one as T2, okay. So T1, T2, okay. So weight of the uh, mass is acting downwards, tension T2 is acting up. Word. Similarly, at the center, I uh, applied a force of 50 Newton. I am trying to pull it in the horizontal direction. What does the string do? I mean, rope do? It will create a tension which acts in the upward direction. I am denoting it in the letter T suffix 1. You are asked to find out what? You are asked to find out what is the value of theta here or what is the angle made by the rope with the vertical. So, here I am going to use the vector resolution method to solve this problem. Okay. So, this is theta and this is the result and if you consider this as a parallelogram, this is the resultant, isn't it? So, if this is the resultant, if this is theta, what will be the adjacent component? Adjacent component will be, this is the adjacent component, isn't it? Will be T1 cos theta and what will be the horizontal component? It will be T1 sin theta. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is, I am going to balance the horizontal and vertical forces. I am going to equate the horizontal forces in the horizontal direction. This is the horizontal direction and also the forces acting in the vertical direction. We are going to solve. Okay. First, we will take the horizontal direction. Now, see the tension T1 sin theta, the component of tension T1 sin theta is acting in this direction and if the system is balanced, then what happens? It is equivalent to 50 Newton. Then only the probe will still uh, stay steady, else it will be moving. Clear? So which means T along the horizontal direction. T1 sin theta is equivalent to what? It is equivalent to 50 Newton force. Then only the system will be equilibrium, otherwise it will be keeping on moving. Okay. Similarly, if I take the vertical direct component of force, okay, 60 Newton is acting downwards, isn't it? And from this point, T1 cos it is acting upwards. So I can write action reaction as T1 cos theta is equal to 16 Newton. I hope how you solve the problem, solve the components. This is angle theta, this is the resultant of the parallelogram. So I am resolving into two components. One is the vertical component that is T1 cos theta adjacent to the side, and second one is the horizontal component T1 sin theta. Then what is the next step? We are solving the horizontal component and vertical component of force. We are equating the horizontal and vertical component of the force. If I take the horizontal direction, this is horizontal direction, isn't it? 50 Newton is acting in this direction and it is equivalent to T1 sin theta if the system is in equilibrium. So I can write T1 sin theta is equal to 50 Newton. Okay, then I am taking the vertical direction in which the weight of the body object at the end is acting downwards and the tension created from the point midpoint is T1 cos theta acting vertically upwards. The net effect of tension which the rope will be, will be feeling is of T1 and T2. Okay? So we can write T1 cos theta is equal to 60 Newton. I got two equations. Now my aim is to find out what is the value of theta. For that what I am going to do is, I am going to divide, I will take this as equation 1 and equation 2. This is a new method I know and as you do solve, as you start solving problems like this it will become very easy. Okay? 
So I'm going to divide equation 1 by 2. Will I get T1 sin theta divided by T1 cos theta is equal to 50 by 60. T1 and T1 get cancelled. What is sin theta by cos theta? Sin theta by cos theta is tan theta. So tan theta is equal to 50 by 60. But my aim is to find out what is theta. Now you all know, we have solved the problems of theta in the previous chapter, but still I am saying, you know, sine, very easy for you to remember about sine, that is why I am using sine, okay. Sine 0 is what? Sine 0 is 0, sine 90 is 1. So if I am asking a question, at what angle of theta sine becomes 1, what will you say it is 90 degrees in it. So it is represented as sine inverse of 1 is equal to 90 degree which means the angle at which the sine value becomes 1 is 90 degree. Similarly, if I write sine inverse of 0, what is the meaning? At what angle of sine you are getting the resultant 0? What is it? It is 0 degree. Same way, I am going to find out theta. Okay, so what must I write? Theta is equal to tan inverse of 5 by 6. Means at which angle of tan you are getting the value as 5 by 6, and the answer is 39.8 degrees. So this is the angle which the rope makes with the vertical. 39.8 degree. I hope this problem is clear to you. You, I, I, you have understood how to resolve the components and how to equate the horizontal and vertical components of force. Now, let us move to the next topic that is motion of an object, or motion of connected bodies. So, in the name itself it is clear, connected bodies means me, which means objects being connected with the help of a rope, we are going to take a rope, okay. For that what I am going to do is, there is a frictionless pulley, okay, this is my frictionless pulley and over this pulley I have passed a rope. So, it is frictionless which means the rope can easily move through the pulley, this green color is my rope. And to one end of the rope, I have connected a mass, capital M, it is a heavier mass. And to the other end, I have connected a smaller mass, small letter M. So what will happen? You know, because of the weight of the, uh, of the ma heavier mass, which is acting downwards, I write it as M, capital M, G, weight the rope will come down. Why? Because it is lesser mass with an acceleration, small letter a, it will be coming down. At the same time, this is a single rope passing through a frictionless pulley. So, what happens? The smaller mass whose weight is acting downwards, small letter mg moves up with an acceleration, same acceleration a because same string or same rope I have used. Now, since the weight of the uh, heavier mass is coming, uh, acting downwards, there will be tension T created in the string. Similarly, here also the weight is acting downwards, so there will be a tension T. It is a connected same string, so same tension will be acting. I hope it is clear. I will explain one to you, once more to you. I have a frictionless pulley and on that frictionless pulley I have passed a rope and to the both ends I have tied two masses capital M and small letter M. Now what, since it is capital M having heavier mass, its weight is acting downwards, it will try to pull the rope down and there is no, uh, the string is not connected to the pulley, it is just passed over the pulley. So what happens, this, uh, the rope will come down with the, along with the mass, uh, the acceleration A which is acting downwards. At the same time, what happens, the smaller mass whose weight is acting downwards, small letter mg will go up and T is the tension produced in the string. Okay. Now, I am going to find out what is the acceleration with which the string is moving and also what is the tension created in the uh, rope. 
for that we have to solve the equation now before going solving to equation i will ask you something imagine you have a wooden block it is kept on the floor okay and there are two persons one person person is applying a force of 50 newton to the right and trying to pull it to the right side clear and there is another person applying a force of 40 newton okay uh, try to pull it uh, the uh, box to the left side now mass or the weight i'll call it the mass mass of the uh, box is 3 kilogram just imagine so there is a box kept on a table or on a surface of, uh, of mass 3 kg and there are two persons each trying to pull the box towards their own side by applying one applying a 50 newton force and second one second, second person applying a force of 40 newton so in which direction will the box move definitely it will move in this direction isn't it why because this is applying more force now with what amount of force the object will, the box will be moving it will be moving with a force of 50 minus 40 that is 10 Newton any doubt in this because forces are applied to the opposite direction so de definitely the force acting on the object will be the difference in force and the direction in which the box moves will be the direction where more force is being applied clear and the force with which this particular box move that is F is equal to M A is equal to what 3 into 9 point we will call some a value that value sorry uh, m into a and we are going to find out what is the value of a hope this is clear the box will be moving with the force equal to m a where m is the mass and a is the acceleration produced in the box due to the force of 10 newton okay same way take this condition in this case the heavier mass is coming down with its weight mg acting downwards and the acceleration is also in the same direction but there is a tension created in the string which is trying to pull the weight upward but the effect of whom is more the effect of heavier mass is more isn't it so we can write the equation as instead of 50 minus 40 what will we write we will write mg minus t these are all forces so mg minus t is equal to m a accelerate force due to the acceleration i hope it is clear heavier force lighter force so difference in force the object will be moved uh, the difference in force the direction in which heavier force is applied the object will be moving so what will i do mg minus t is equal to ma because the object is coming down okay now in this case what is happening the object is moving up with an acceleration which means effect of tension produced in the string is more than the effect of force produced by the weight mg so how will i write the equation as i write it as t minus small letter m into g is equal to small letter m into a why because effect of tension force is more than the effect of weight acting downwards that is why my string is moving my uh, slope and the weight is moving upward so ma is equal to force produced by acceleration ma is equal to what is equal to difference in force acting that is t minus mg why am i writing t in the beginning because effect of t is more in this case whereas in the previous case effect of mg was more mg was bigger like 50 newton and 40 newton mg is 50 40 was tension but in the in this case 40 is mg and 50 is t that is why we got the equation like this and this is equation one and this is equation two now what is my aim my aim is to find out what is the tension acting on the string or the rope and also what is the acceleration produced for that first i am going to add equation 1 and 2 so equation 1 plus 2 like you saw you have solved the equation x plus y is equal to 50 x minus y is equal to 20 then what is x and y you will solve using addition method isn't it same way instead of x and y we have t and mg that is it now when i am adding what happens i will get mg minus t plus t minus mg is equal to <coughs> capital m a plus small letter m a t and t common get cancelled i will get 
m capital m minus small letter m into g is equal to capital m plus small letter m into a or acceleration produced in the string a is equal to m minus m divided by capital M plus M into G. This is the equation to find out how much acceleration will be produced in the rope or the string when they are connected by two bodies on either side. Okay. Next what we are going to do is we are going to find out what is the tension produced in the string. For that I am going to divide equation 1 by 2. I will get capital M G minus t by t minus m a is equal to capital m a by small letter m a. This is equation 1, this is equation 2. These two will get cancelled, you cross multiply you will get m g minus t into m is equal to t minus m a into capital M. You bring the t terms to one side you will get small letter m equal to 2 g is also g to capital M small letter m into g or the tension produced in the string t is equal to 2 capital M small letter m divided by capital M plus small letter m into this is the equation for tension in the string, tension produced in the string and this is the equation to find out the acceleration produced in the connected bodies. I hope this is clear to you. Thank you.